Recently, I set out on a journey to go from 60 overall to 99 with absolutely zero VC. Now I did this on a brand new account using a brand new build. And after some long hours and putting in all that work, we finally hit 99 overall. And in this video today, I'm going to do a full breakdown of how I hit 99 overall and how you guys can too. Before we go ahead and hop into the video though, about 90% of the people that watch my videos are currently not subscribed and it would be greatly, greatly appreciated if everyone watching this could just smash that subscribe button. We're on this road to 100k and trying so, so hard to hit it. So make sure to hit that subscribe button if you enjoy the videos. Now in this video, I'm going to do a quick run through of each episode just in case anybody missed any episodes or if they never watched the series before, you could still understand how I did this and what I did to achieve this. After that, we're going to go in depth about how long this actually took me in hours, how much VC I got from each game mode, the best game mode to play to get you the most VC possible, and a bunch of more really, really in-depth stats to show you guys how possible this is. And really only if you dedicate a few hours a day, you can hit 99 extremely, extremely quick. With all that being said though, let's hop straight into it. On June 24th, I decided to upload the first episode of this series. Now, like I said in the intro, I started on a brand new account, so that meant making a brand new account. On this brand new account, obviously I had no builds, and that meant I had to start off with a 60 overall, with absolutely zero VC and no way to make VC because I don't have a player to play the game. But even with all of that, I still decided, okay, let's do this, come on. And so the build I made was a blue green. It was more blue than green. That is the pie chart that I used to make my build. Now, honestly, looking back, this is one of the harder builds to max out because it doesn't have that playmaking in it. Playmaking is very, very easy to max out. And so I'd recommend you making a build with playmaking if you're gonna do this, or even in like 2K23, if you're gonna do this, make a build with playmaking because you can throw lobs and lobs are the best way to max a build out. So looking back, a blue green might've not been the best choice, but I made it work still. And these stats that I'm gonna show you guys at the end of this video are from my blue green build. After making this brand new build, I played a few my career games, but realized it was gonna be way too hard and figured out I could watch 2K TV for VC. This is gonna come in later. And there will be 2K TV episodes at the beginning of 2K23, as well as there's a bunch already up if you're trying to do this in 2K22. It's one of the easiest ways to start out if you have absolutely zero VC. And I ended off on episode one as a 68 overall. In episode two that I uploaded on June 29th, obviously starting out as a 68 overall, like I ended off in the last episode. I watched the rest of the 2K TV episodes. And again, like, you know what I'm saying? 2K TV, one of the best methods to start out. And you'll see at the end how much VC it actually gives you an hour on average. Then I went to play Proim. And Proim, if you guys don't know, was one of the best VC methods. If you guys are gonna play Park, I'd recommend you just go play 3v3 matchmaking Proim. It's gonna be back-to-back -back games. And you'll see at the end, you get a lot more VC per hour than you do in playing Park. And after that, I finished that episode off by playing a little bit of my career. And my career, again, will be one of the best men that you guys will see at the end. Ending that episode off at a 76 overall. Now on July 5th, I came out with episode three. Now this episode wasn't as eventful as the previous episodes. I started at a 76, I streamed and played Park, and then went and played my career for the rest of the episode and got myself to an 81 overall. And if you guys haven't noticed, these episodes are pretty far apart, but you guys will see at the end, I was not playing on this account every single day. And if I was playing on this account every day, I probably could have done this in a week or two, but I just had so much going on in between these episodes that I couldn't drop them every single day. And that's why they're about a week apart each. But in my opinion, it's very, very easy to do this challenge much, much faster. So on July 11th, episode four dropped and I was an 81 overall. Now in this episode, I started by playing my career. And remember, endorsements give you so much VC. Majority of the VC you get for my career is not from playing the game. It's literally just from endorsements. And when you play my career over and over and over again and get a bunch of games played, these endorsements ramp up. And so you're getting like 10K VC every three games just from a random endorsement you get. Then I went to the Gatorade gym and did my workout. Make sure you guys, if you're doing a new player, do your Gatorade workout. It helps out very, very much. Played pro I am then back to my career, then I played Park, and then to Prime again, and we finished episode four off at an 85 overall. You guys can see we're making big jumps in each episode. Now on July 18th, starting out as 85 overall in part five, I started off by playing my career. I simmed to the playoffs. This is something I would recommend doing early on, simming to the playoffs and winning a championship for gym rats. Very, very easy. Play five minute quarters, pro difficulty, sweep all the teams and you will get gym rat very, very easily on that player. Then I went to play Park After Dark, streamed threes with some subs, and then finished that episode off by playing Prime, finishing off at an 89 overall. Part six dropping on July 26, obviously starting off at an 89 overall. In this episode, I played Pro AM. Then I streamed Park and a little bit of stage, which got me a lot of VC. And then I went and played a little bit more Pro AM, finishing this episode off at a 93 overall. And finally, on August 1st, I released part seven, where I started at a 93 overall. I streamed Park and stage, 
got to 95 by grinding a few my career games after we hit 95 all we had to do was go to 99 after that using the fluctuating system so it didn't cost any more vc after hitting 95 and we went from 95 to 97.5 in my career and then we streamed 97.5 to 99 in park ending as a 99 overall i know that was a lot to take in but here are the final stats whether i played park pro am my career these are the final stats and how many games i played and what my win percent was and so you guys can get a rough idea of how much you need to play in order to hit 99 overall i think it's a lot less than a lot of people are gonna think in the end i had 140 park games played and my record was 125 and 15. i, I know that record is very very good and a lot of people won't be able to replicate that but winning the game does not really affect how much vc you're getting from the game as long as you get a decent teammate grade i would recommend threes over twos for newer players as well and that record ends up being an 89.3 win percent moving on to my career i had 69 my career games played and no i did not plan that for a joke like i promise you i did not plan that now 69 games might seem like a lot of my career games but what you guys gotta remember is all of these my career games are on five minute quarters they're all on five minute quarters five minute quarters is gonna get you more vc a game because you're gonna be able to play more games so i would recommend having five minute quarters on also probably about 10 of those are going from 95 to 97.5 at the very very end and another 16 of them are from winning a championship and unlocking gym rat and finally in pro am i played 118 games my record was 99 and 19 and i had an 83.3 win percent pro am i really didn't care about my record i literally played with anyone this is where i was mainly playing with like subs in pro am i literally just picked up anyone i would tweet out for a teammate and literally just just pick up the first person that responded which is why my win percent is a little bit worse than park but it doesn't really matter win percent doesn't matter as long as you're getting a high teammate grade and in pro am you especially want to aim for a super high teammate grade because you get so much more vc for an a or an a plus as opposed to a b so you guys have seen how many games i played in order to do this but that doesn't really tell you that much i'm gonna break down how much vc you're getting from each games how long each game is taking and in total the amount of hours you have to play in order to hit 99 overall and remember a lot of this is estimates it's not going to be the exact amount of time because i just use estimates i would say these are pretty pretty accurate and how much you're going to play but remember these are estimates the first thing i did when calculating this i went to how many games i can play per hour in each game mode now for me this was my breakdown if you don't get back-to-back -back games or you're not getting a game every single second or you don't have teammates or something like this it may affect that but this is how long it took for me for a park game i put down that it would be 10 games an hour six minutes per game which for me is pretty accurate i could play about 10 games in an hour for my career since I'm playing five minute quarters, and since in the beginning, you don't really get a lot of play time, I put down that you could put four games an hour. You may only be able to get like three. You may be able to get five, but I just put four games an hour to average it out over the course of playing my career. And obviously, even though you're playing five minute quarters, you're not playing every single minute of the entire game. So that's why I said 15 minutes a game. And for pro -Am, I put that I could play about seven games an hour. Now I played a lot of pro -Ams that hit level 40. I kind of figured out that it was about seven games an hour. If you're going like average pace, sometimes you can get eight or nine if you're like really, really really fast with your games and sometimes it's like six but i just put seven to be a little bit conservative and this rounds out to about 8.5 minutes per game one thing i did throw in here as well is the 2k tv now the episodes i think are about 15 to 20 minutes long however you can like skip a little bit after each question so i just put down 10 minutes per episode now that you guys know how long it takes for each game on average remember these are averages and this is an estimate so it's not going to be exact every single time but now that you guys know an estimate of how long it takes for each game 140 park games times six minutes per game is 840 minutes or about 14 hours. Before you say that's a lot and you comment down that's a lot, if you break that down between seven days, that's two hours a day. And I feel like a decent amount of people play video games or do something for two hours a day. So I feel like that's not that much. And also remember for me, this was coursed out over about a month and you can really course it out however long you want. I'll have a few different estimates at the very, very end of the video. For my career, 69 games times 15 minutes per game is about 1,035 minutes or 17 hours and 15 minutes, which again may seem like a lot, but when you average it out over a certain amount of days, it's really not that much. And finally, for Pro AM, it was 118 games times 8.5 minutes per game, which is 1,003 minutes or 16 hours, 43 minutes. Those were all game times too. So it doesn't include any time where you're not actually in a game. The Pro AM includes like the loading screens and same for the park includes loading screens if you have like back-to-back -back games. But if you're like searching for a game, this doesn't include that. And finally, the 2K TV episodes, I believe there was 42 episodes that I watched at about 10 minutes per episode, which equates to about seven hours. In total, this took me 54 hours and 58 minutes. Again, this is an estimate. That might not be exact, but 54 hours and 58 minutes of actual playtime it took me 
in order to hit 99 overall. But wait, that's not it for this breakdown. That's not it. I calculated the amount of hours it took me to hit 99 overall, but let's calculate how much VC I got from each game mode and how much VC I got per hour from each game mode so you guys can know what the best game mode to play is to get VC the fast. On average, I believe a park game gives you about 300 a game. My career, I said 800 a game. Once you include like teammate grade VC and all of that, and especially if you get like a max contract, then you get a thousand per game. But on top of that VC that you get from just playing my career, you also get endorsements and I'll get into my estimate in a few seconds. For pro AM, I said about 700 VC a game. If you have a really high teammate grade, you can get 900. If you have a really low teammate grade, you might get like 500. But I just said 700, it's in the middle ground. I would say on average, I get about 700. And finally for 2K, TV. I said the average I got was about 1250 an episode. Some of the episodes you get more than others, but I just said on average it was about 1250. And so doing the calculations for Park, I played 140 games times 300 VC per game is 42,000 VC. For my career, 69 games times 800 VC a game is 55,200. For Pro Am, 118 games times 700 is 82,600 VC. And for 2K TV, 42 episodes times 1250 an episode is 52,500 is right around where I actually got from watching all those 2K TV episodes. I believe I got around 56K. I may be mistaken, but the estimate showed 52K. Now for the endorsements, this is where like a lot of fluctuation might come in. I know for a fact I got at least 50K because there was quite a few 10K endorsements I got at the very end, as well as 7K endorsements I got. And so I think the absolute minimum I got was 50K from endorsements over the course of playing those 69 My Career games. But I think it was actually closer to a 70 to 100K. And so I said 100K maximum, 50K minimum, we'll go in the middle. And I said 75K VC from endorsements. Endorsements give you so much VC and it just stacks so, so much as you play more and more My Career. And you guys will see in the end how much My Career gives you per hour on average. It's absolutely insane. So in total, that was 307,300 VC, which is it's just a lot of VC, but that is about how much you get in upgrading a player. I wanted to do a full breakdown for this because a lot of people just say I buy VC, which I really don't get because I literally show you guys every single game I play or almost every game I play. And when you add all of these showing my record, everything you guys could see, there's literally no way for me to buy VC. I have plenty of VC. VC really wasn't the issue in this. And now that you guys know how much VC I got from every game mode and how long I spent in every game mode, here is the best way to make VC and the best, most efficient way what to play in order to get the most VC. Now in Park, I got 42,000 VC for 14 hours of playing, which is about 3,000 an hour. And honestly, I think that's a little bit over of an estimate. I think it's a little bit less than that. For Pro Am, I played 16.71 hours about and got 82,600 VC, which is 4,943 VC an hour which is probably almost double what Park is, because I said Park is probably a little bit less. Pro AM, that's probably exactly what it is, and it's almost double Park. For 2K TV, when you're first starting out, I wouldn't do 2K TV like after, because it's really boring, but when you're first starting out, if you need a little bit of VC, I would say 2K TV. 52,500 VC over seven hours is 7,500 VC an hour, but by far and above, this actually came to a surprise to me, the front runner, the absolute front runner, it's not even close, is my career. 55,200 plus an estimated 75,000 from endorsements. It's probably more than 75,000, but I just put 75,000 to be a little bit conservative. Over 17 hours and 15 minutes equals 7,547 VC an hour, which absolutely clears Pro Am, absolutely clears Park. If you were trying to get to 99 the fastest possible way, the best way is my career. And honestly, if I only played my career, it probably would have been an even higher average because like I said, as you go, the endorsements just get higher and higher and higher. But anyway, the average VC that I made over this entire challenge, 307,300 VC over 55 hours of playing is 5,587 VC per hour that I was making. And I know there was a lot of stats and a lot of numbers in that. You may have got confused, but just some final thoughts, some final things to say to make it a little bit simpler. If you wanted to go from 60 to 99 in just one week, you would have to play about eight hours a day, which I know is a lot for some people. A lot of people are busy. They have plenty of other things to do. And I'm not saying to go play the game eight hours a day, but if you really had a week off and you didn't do anything for that week and just played 2K, you could hit it in a week or even less, honestly. And let's say you wanted to take this to a month, right? You wanted to go from 60 to 99 and you had a month's time to do it. You could do that in about an hour and 45 minutes. If you just put an hour 45 into every single day, 
playing 2k which really isn't that much i feel like a lot of people play video games for at least two hours a day anyway or watch youtube they they have some free time and if you're really trying to get to 99 two hours a day is nothing and again this is using the average vc per hour which is what i got if you guys only play my career you can be a lot more efficient and so from my estimate i believe you should be playing my career the most but my career can get boring so if you're not playing my career i would say go play pro am pro am is the best after my career but if you could just sit there and play my career all day you could probably finish this even faster than what i said but this entire video i really just wanted to do a full breakdown of how you can hit 99 and really it doesn't take as much time as you guys may think i know a lot of you have work or school so you don't really have that much time in a day but if you just set aside an hour a day you can hit 99 with absolutely no problems it may take a little bit of time but in the end it'll all be worth it that way you can have a max player and you can go carry your friends and another thing you get from playing the game this much is you get way better at the game so you know what i'm saying when you're 99 overall carrying all your friends you can be way better than all of them but yeah i would just focus on one player only one player don't make a million players just make one build focus on getting it to 99 especially if you're struggling getting to 99 and whether it be in 2k22 i wouldn't recommend playing 2k22 pretty much any longer because 2k23 is right around the corner but in 2k23 if you guys wanted to do this it's very very plausible to hit 99 overall only playing a couple hours a day but with all this being said i hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown this analysis of me going from 60 to 99 overall and with all that being said make sure to that sub button and i'm out man peace